Jeep Tool ladies, it's Green Dot 319. Welcome to hopefully the happy conclusion of building the Carter 539S carburetor. Now, if you haven't seen them, we've got parts one and two, and hopefully this is the end, part three, of getting this thing together. Part three then, what we're gonna do is we're going to finish this thing off, okay? And I'm gonna talk about some of the important things so this won't just simply be the rebuild for the end of it. This is actually going to give you some of the tips to make this thing work properly because there's a little, there's a couple of little bits in here that you need to make sure you do to make sure this thing actually works and that you don't have that horrible flat spot that you get with a 539S when you've got problems with it, okay? And we're going to make sure that we don't have that. Um, so that's what we're going to look at, okay? So let's get back to our little uh, Carter rebuild manual here then and see what it says. So. We're in assemble parts in group C. Okay, install metering rod jet assembly. Well, this is exciting. Here we go. We've got our metering rod jet assembly there. And all we're gonna do is screw that into the bottom, right down there at the base, in there and make sure it's fully seated, okay? So we'll screw that in. Okay, proper screwdriver. Right, we've seated him in the bottom firmly. So our little needle seat is all down there, ready to go to accept the needle. Now let's move on. Right, we just need to take a little step back just because of the way I've filmed this. It's sort of uh, got a little bit all over the place, but let's go back a bit. Um, we've got install pump spring. Okay, we're gonna work on the accelerator pump now. Now this is important. This is a pump spring, goes down the cylinder there. Okay, drop him in. Now it says install pump plunger and rod assembly. Now here comes the fun, okay. Now this is important, so you need to pay attention. So one of the major problems with people's carbs is that you get a flat spot once you push the accelerator and then the carb picks up. So it, what people say is the carb bogs down, okay. And what that is, is this carb is not particularly clever. It's, it's simple, but it does work when it's working properly. Initially, when you press that accelerator, the, the main jet, the, uh, the high-speed circuit, has a little bit of lag before it allows fuel to come through, okay? So what they did is they have an accelerator pump. It's just pre it's pretty much a syringe. We've already talked about it. It's a syringe which sprays fuel directly into the Venturi and gives you a boost straight away, okay? And how that works is like a syringe. You've got a plunger. You've got a cylinder there, which you plunge in, right? Now, the problem with that is if you're... Um, plunger is not up to snuff and is not properly contacting the walls of the cylinder then it can't plunge you know all the pressure when you push just escapes around the, around the side of the cylinder okay now if you're using a carter master rebuild kit that's not a problem because the new plunger that comes with it works great and you just dump it in there and away you go and that's what i've done with my previous ones but what we're trying to do this time is we're trying to rebuild a carb using original components so as if you've just taken a carb a dirty one off your jeep can you just put it straight back in there and get going? Okay, so let's have a look. We've got a plunger problem then. Now this is a plunger out of a cheaper rebuild kit and I don't think this would work. Okay, it looks beautiful, doesn't it? But as we've just seen, if I start to, or some of you might have noticed, if I drop it in the cylinder, look how much movement there is in there, okay? That leather is way away from this walls of this cylinder. So just like with a syringe, if you tried to push, all the pressure would just escape out the side here and it wouldn't be forcing it down the bottom where it needs to go. Now, I know some of you will say, well, Matt, what happens is the pressure gets underneath the leather, balloons it out, and then it seals against the uh, the walls there, okay? Well, I think that's true with um, one of the Carter Master Rebuild ones, but this is way too tight, I think. I don't think the, the fuel and the pressure could ever get underneath that leather and lift it up to force it out against the walls there. So I don't think this would work. This is way too tight. Now, I could be wrong about that, but I don't like it. I wouldn't use that, okay? So let's have a look. What else do you get then? One of the other things you find is you get, yeah, this one's all right. Uh, it's, uh... Ah, here we go. This is the one. Now, what we get is, I remember reading in a manual, and I can't remember which one off the top of my head. It says, if the leather is turned up at the edges, then you can't reuse it. Now this is interesting. This one here is turned up quite a long way on this side, but not on the other ones. And if we push him in, you can see it's, look, it's not rocking around inside there anymore. It's sealing up against the walls. And then if I push it, it's pushing and returning. So it's not pushing too hard. That'll be a really good seal that will, and that'll blast fuel out of that accelerator pump. So although it says don't use ones which are turned up, I don't think we've gone too far with that one. I think this one is still usable. It's not ideal, but it's, I think it's definitely better than using the one which won't pump at all. You know, more pumping or it being stiff is probably better than no pumping, I reckon. And perhaps, you know, with a bit of use, it might free up a little bit and 
I think this one could work, okay? So this one's a possible. If it's really turned up, then maybe not. And then what else have we got? The one, we've got this one here. He looks pretty good. This is what I think, if I recall correctly, the Carter Master Rebuild Kit ones come looking like. That's pretty nice, that one. Although, I say that, you can see it's even all the way around. And it might be a bit too much. Oh, see, I was saying it was all right, but this one might be a bit too much uh, pushed out, actually. I can't even get it to go in. So let's see if I can force it. There we go. I've made it go round. Oh, yeah, that's, see this one. Haha. <laughs> this one is, I think, is too tight. Look, it's getting jammed. So it would never, the plunger wouldn't return. You know, when you pulled off the throttle, the plunger wouldn't return. So this is a really good <laughs> demonstration, actually. Um, this one is too much. So there was me saying this one's possibly okay off the top of my head. That one is too much. So there's there's a bit of a difference here. We've got ones which are too little, we've got ones which are too much, and we've got ones which are just right. Now the one I'm gonna use, which I think is the Goldilocks. Let's just compare the two. This was the previous one here. Look, you can see this is more perhaps than what the original Carter rebuild one is like. This one's too much, I think. So it's just something, just me misremembering, and we can see that this one was too much. So this is too much. This is the one which I think is right. Let's compare that to the rebuild kit one. You can just see it's just splayed out a little bit there. So let's see then, let's put him in. So not too tight, doesn't waggle around, and then it's moving up and down freely and returning, and you can hear it sort of making a scoosh sort of noise as it's pumping. So I think this is the one to go with, okay? So this is just for our reference then. If we're rebuilding using original components, this sort of one seems to be the, the Goldilocks, okay? You can have too much, you can have too little, and you can have <laughs> just right, apparently, okay? So this is what we're gonna go with. So plungers, there you go, that's a, a one in one of plungers. So let's drop our plunger in. Just as a, a side quick, if you've got a plunger, these are all ones I've sort of recovered, okay? The uh, leather will be dried out in them generally, because they've been in petrol for 70 years. So what you can do is you can put the fat back into them using a thing called dubbing, okay? Um, it's just leather fat and you soak it in it, you rub it all on it. It's just grease. You rub it all on it, the leather soaks it all up and away you go again and you're, you're good for another 70 years or so. So there we go, we've got our plunger sorted, dropped in. Perfect. Install bolt cover as assembled, tightening screws down evenly and securely. This is the bolt cover assembly all complete completed, okay? Now, one of the things about this then, first off your metering rod, these things can wear out. It's very, very accurate. Let's just quickly do some measuring, okay? So metering rod standard is 0 0.060 inches at the top to 0.4847 at the bottom. This has got to be accurate, okay? If your metering rod is worn out and your metering rod seat are worn out, then there's nothing you can do about that. You need to get hold of a new metering rod. So let's just quickly measure this one and just make sure it's all right, because they do wear, and some of them look ridiculous because they're worn to all hell. There you go, 0.60. It's just my sort of calipers and me doing this cat handed And then at the bottom, 0.485 should be 0.48 to 0.47 or zero point. So you can see this one's actually all right. And you you know, you know can see the wear on them. This one looks fine. If they've got shoulders and ridges, look, there's just a touch or something there. But it's this one's a good one, I think. This one's fine. So make sure that's all right. And then up here, we've got this sort of linkage assembly as well. Now these things wear out. The design of this carb is not fantastic, as we know. You Hello, got bits falling out of it. Um, we know that the design is not great. You can't... Uh, you know, this isn't greased or anything like in here and, and people don't grease them and look the, the brass just wears out so you get slop and play in there and that slop and play obviously translates into poor operation of the car the um, carburetor because all this linkage up here is controlling your metering rod and your accelerator pump so if there's slop and play when you touch the throttle you're going to get movement of the throttle but nothing occurs because there's loads of play in here so all you can do really is inspect the parts this one is it would work it's not great i wouldn't be happy to use it but you know you're going to have to take apart some carbs to get hold of a spare or somehow find a spare it's not easy but it can be done but that's what you've got to do if you want to make a carb work nicely is is make sure you know these things work all right okay and these bits are okay so just bear that in mind right so um we've got this pin assembly already assembled in there it's quite straightforward we have a little pin which sits in there. The little pin, you 
probably can't see it has just uh, there it has little shoulders which attack go inside the groove on this linkage where's my spare one yeah I just moved it over there didn't I Duh. right so there's little shoulders on here and they lock in this little groove here okay so make sure that those if you put it in sort of sideways and try and jam it in it won't go in so just make sure those shoulders are inside that groove okay when you're assembling it and then what you've got is you've got the pin washer nut and on the other side a spring the spring goes like this it comes down and it goes into the metering rod assembly there and it sort of pushes pressure to make sure that it's pushed down okay so all the time we have a little clip holding it on and at the bottom we have a little disc there a little washer which sort of covers up that hole but doesn't really cover up that hole so that is the pump arm sort of assembly there that they tell you to put on as a complete unit okay so that's how it all is so just get that all assembled like that okay then install bolt cover as assembled tighten screws down evenly and securely well we've got the whole thing assembled already to make it slightly more difficult because we've just jumped ahead of ourselves but everything's in together the pump element is in there and our metering rod is going to drop down into our little um bowl his little uh, seat at the bottom there just make sure it goes down straight it doesn't go off to one side or anything like that because that'll really upset you if you damage it and of course our gasket is in there as well all hidden away so just drop him down carefully this is a bit of a bit of fun to do this right we've got that screwed down and just chained a washer on there to a different one so we've got him all in there this is all trying to get in the way and you can see our metering rod is moving up and down freely in its seat and everything so it says Install pump connector link ends away from bore and pin spring at the top. Right, here is our pump connector link. That's the bore, so the ends are away from the bore and the spring goes in the top. So let's push him there, push him down a bit, get him in. There he is. And now you can see the unit operating as one. So that's our accelerator pump and our metering rod. This isn't set up yet. You can see it's all working as it should. Little pin goes in the top there to hold it in place. There we go. So we've got our spring or our little um, pin spring in there. Install throttle shaft arm and screw assembly on throttle shaft. Coming down to the bottom, this is the throttle shaft assembly. We're using quite a ropey one here because we're trying to make a, a really sort of used looking one, I think, with this one. So there's um, our um, assembly attached there. So that's just screwed on there. And then install throttle connector rod in throttle shaft arm using spring and retainer at lower ends and pin spring at the top end. Okay, well, here comes something. Now, the World War II connector rods have this on there because they have a little, a little um, retainer which has a, a spring and a little bent bit of metal, okay? And those things are really, really difficult to get hold of. I've only found one after taking apart loads of World War II carbs because those little retainers get lost. They fall off and they're a bit rubbish. Um, so they're a real pain. What you find more often is the post-war one, which I've half connected on here, okay? And this is a much better connector, but um, yeah, you don't really find the original World War II ones, which is a bit of a pain. So, hey, anyway, there we go. But all that happens then is, you can see this one's a little bit worn as well. And if we use the original connector, it would wear in the same place there and sort of cut through this connecting rod, whereas this style doesn't uh, cause it to wear in the same place, so it's quite useful actually. So all we do is we plonk him in there. Now this is a little bit tricky. And down at the bottom as well through the hole. There we go, yes. That retainer clips, clips on, holds it all on there. You can see where the, uh, the spring retainer would go in this bit here, but because we're not using that, it's now superfluous. And we put a pin in the top as there to hold it on as well, if I can find where I put that. Right, little pin, hopefully, on, click. There we go, so this is all connected up now, retained at the bottom down there with this post-war style, the better style connector, held at the top there. And if we move it, look at that. There's no sort of lost movement there. As soon as you move it, well, this, Forget the metering rod, the metering rod isn't set up yet. We're just talking about the linkages here, but we can see as soon as we move it, the accelerator pump starts to pump. There's no lost movements. So that's really nice, so that's good. 
So even though these are used worn parts, they're still pretty well behaved. You can see earlier when we we're talking about the wear in these bushings, you know, you'd lose a bit of motion in there. This one's not perfect, but it's not bad at all. I think this is pretty good. You can see how the system works here. You open the throttle, the pump goes, the pump only moves a certain amount and then stops. And then you can open the throttle even further due to that spring. So it's a, it's a cool little thing. And these always, this thing here, this linkage always walks off this pin constantly due to the design of it but usually you have the top of it holding it in place but it always tries and walks itself off so anyway it seems to be working that is good so where do we go from here pump adjustment great fun okay so the metering the uh, accelerator pump we know is now going to be pumping but it has to pump the right amount okay there's a tool you can use to do this I don't have the tool I haven't used the tool all I do is use my old vernier calipers and not the scalpel blade the vernier calipers okay so back out throttle lever set screw this is it we had it set up earlier but we've now backed it out completely so that our throttle butterfly is completely seated now so it's all closed off so back out throttle lever set screw with throttle valve seated pump should travel six seventeen sixty fourths of an inch what sort of measurement is that seventeen sixty fourths that's crazy um from close decimal is much better um from close to wide open throttle adjustment can be made by bending throttle connector rod at lower angle with tool okay so the amount of movement you should have on here this pump should have seven that should be 17 64ths of an inch okay and if it's not you bend it at the bo bottom here okay so that's what we're going to do so we need to measure it now this might be slightly difficult to show you oh it might be all i do with the vernier calipers is i set up 17 64ths which is uh 0.2656 i think but i can do 0 0.2650 it did have it to 55 but it's moved anyway who cares about half thousandth of an inch all i do is i'm just going to show you here i'm not going to do it really accurately but just so you can see it all i do is line up the bottom of the linkage there like that and i just hold it and then I, this is really difficult to do now can i just do it with my finger you're getting an idea here guys i would then go on finger move it yes open it and you can see it's moved from the bottom of that linkage go on finger you can do it give me some power ah <laughs> This is, this is difficult to do. So the bottom of the linkage. So you can see it's moving. This one is moving 17 64th of an inch. This one is set up nicely. Let's see if we can do it a better way. Yeah, go on, ready? Bottom of the linkage, open. Bottom of the linkage. So yeah, I mean, that's 17 64th of an inch, isn't it? That's working correctly. So we don't need to adjust this rod. This is fine. This is set up fine, but you do find some of them where they're bent all over the place. Bubba and whoever has gone to town and they've, they've bent this well out, up and down and what have you. So you may need to bend it, but this one is fine. So that's good, that's 1764. So you don't need the fancy pumping tool. You just need your trusty vernier calipers. And if you actually hold it properly, you know, you lie it down on its side, like, you know, this is how I would do it. I would lie it on the side there, do this correctly. Close, let's do it like this, close him up and then open him and I can see that's 1764 so that's nice so that's set up really nicely that one so that's how I set it up cool so we go on to the metering rod adjustment now with shoulder on metering rod seated in metering rod jet metering rod pin must be adjusted to lightly contact top of metering rod eyelet with 15 thousandths to 18 thousandths of an inch opening between the top uh, between edge of throttle valve and bore of carburetor okay so with the carburetor just lightly cracked with 15 thousandths to 18 thousandths of an inch between the butterfly and the edge, the wall of the uh, carburetor here. So with that just open, which is just about your idle position, all right, what should happen is the metering rod pin, or sorry, should I, should I say the metering rod, when it's seated in its valve seat down in the bottom of the bowl there, should just be lightly contacted by this pin here, okay? So that's how it should be in your idle position, okay? So what we do is we set up our throttle position to be open 15 thousandths to 18 thousandths of an inch open, which is just, you know, just doing its eyeballing is just a hair open, okay? And then we make sure our metering rod pin, we drop it in, we make sure that it's firmly seated. We also must make sure that there's a very small 
uh, spring there, we make sure that that is in the little eyelet there because that's giving pressure pushing down on the metering rod, making sure that it's going into the firmly seating in the um, uh, seat at the bottom there, okay? And also make sure this linkage is pushed full back because uh, like I said, it tries to move forward. So make sure it's fully back, okay? And all you do then is, so our pin is in this position here. We've backed off the nut on the back of it. So let's just move it down. So this one's a bit sticky because it had worn a bit, this pin actually, and this linkage here. So they're just a touch worn, so it, it, it likes the position it was in before. So let's just tease it open. Okay, it's moving again now. It might be a bit finicky to play with, but look, we can see the pin is going down there, but the uh, metering rod isn't. Okay, so let's just play with it for a sec. Yes, yeah, so if I push the top of the metering rod, it's seated now at the moment, okay, and that pin actually is pretty much in the top just there. So if I just tighten him up by fingers. Right, I had to take it apart a little bit and spin it round. Obviously, this. Um, lever and this pin don't like each other a huge amount with that wear in there but this is sort of accurate for rebuilding one isn't it you know you might have a little bit of wear on your pin there so just seeing if you can still reuse it you can you just got to fiddle with it a bit but anyway here we go this is what we're looking for then the needle is seated or should i say yeah the, the metering rod let's use the correct word the metering rod is seated in the bowl and it's just with that throttle crack so as soon as you move as soon as you move the throttle look there's off it goes there's no there's no sort of slack here in this pin and this pit and metering rod. They move together as one immediately. So that's how you should set it up, okay? So that's that's the way it should be done. Now, what it says in the Carter Rebuild um, thing is you can have optional adjustment. Correct setting of metering rod is important and must be made after pump adjustment. Install metering rod pin and spring assembly, washer and nut, loosely on pump operating lever, insert gauge tool. Right, here we go. In place of metering rod, seated um, seating tapered end in metering rod jet. Hold gauge vertical to ensure seating with throttle valve seated. Push metering rod pin downward until pin rests on shoulders of the notch in the gauge and tighten nut. Remove gauge and install metering rod disc and pin. Connect metering rod uh, spring. Right. Here's the interesting thing about this. So what they want you to do is remove the rod or before you put the rod in, drop this guy in. He, with the uh, throttle butterfly closed, so fully closed, unlike we're doing now, you drop him in, so he goes down there, and then the pin, you put the pin in so that it lines up with this step here, and that's the height you should put it at. Now, the problem with this is that I've never been able to actually get one of these to work, because getting this metering rod is going through a little hole there, and with a pin in place, you can't easily get the rod off this this pin, it doesn't come out easily. You know, you've got to you've got to lean it over a little bit, and um, that sort of bends it. So um, I haven't actually been able to really get one in there. I was just trying to do it with this one, and it, it, to get this in, it would sort of end up bending the uh, rod to do it. So I'm not going to bother. So I really don't see the need for this. It would be interesting to try and set one up using it, but this today, I'm not I'm not feeling it. So um, we won't bother with that. But um, that is one way of doing it, apparently. But I'm not sure about that. I'm not convinced by this. Just do this, just seat the seat the pin like that, it's easy as pie, it's what it says to do. And it says that's an optional adjustment as well, using this tool is the optional adjustment. So the go-to adjustment, in my opinion, is do what I've done, and then for whatever reason, maybe if you're feeling bored or something, give that a shot. But this is the way to do it, okay? So, here we go. After adjustment, metering rod seats in metering rod jet when throttle is adjusted for normal curb idle. Metering rod spring must exert slight downward pressure to of metering rod on metering rod pin when off jet. Bend lower end of spring downward where necessary. Well, it just means that little spring there should be pushing this uh, metering rod down, which it is. So if it's not putting enough pressure on there, bend that bottom bit down there so it pushes the rod down, okay? It's always trying to push the rod into the seat. So just remember that your little spring here could be slightly bent or worn or something like that. So just make sure that's pushed into there. Uh, install nozzle and nozzle gasket using tool. Oh, okay. Be sure that the flat side of the nozzle faces upwards. Well, this is the main jet we're putting in here. Main jet lives inside there. Main jets are a pain. It's got a um, it's got a little um, seat, and then it's got a a um, uh, a disc, you know, a blanking plug here, and the nozzle itself. I've never really found a good way of getting these nozzles out. Once they're in, they seem to sort of be stuck in there. They 
they go into a close tolerance fit inside this um, bit here and getting them out without damaging them it seems to be very very difficult so um, generally it's a big it's not a small nozzle there's not little hole or something like that it's a big wide nozzle so if it's not damaged then I think they're okay to just leave in there that's what this one is that one's in there as well so we've got to put in a little um, uh, install nozzle and nozzle gasket okay and then install nozzle retainer plug so we've got to put the retainer plug in so let's get that out okay so what we've got is we've got our main jet in there already so he's already down the end now there are two different types here okay we've got the world war ii 539s one here and you can tell that it's got a flat top to it okay and when you put it in the flat top goes at the top and you, you push it up and then it, in it goes okay and it has a gasket here as well a little uh, gasket so that is the world war ii one and then there's the post-war one the 698s one and this, this is it here, okay? And you can see it doesn't have that cut at the end of it and it doesn't have the flat top. And that pushes up in and in as well, okay? So there's two different types there, slightly different. Um, no, I can't see a difference there. Look, this one's got like a, a little chamfer there. So there's, there's differences. I wonder what difference would happen if the 698 throttle body is, uh, should I say the, the carb body is slightly different inside, differently machined. I wonder what would happen if you put in a World War II one without this sort of chamfer. There's an interesting question. I wonder what the difference is. So, huh, something something weird there. But they also have two sort of the retaining plugs as well, okay? So that's the World War II one, and then that's the post-war one, the 698. Slightly large diameter there, slightly smaller diameter. So what you need to do is make sure when you're putting these things together, guys, that you're um, putting the correct nozzles in them because obviously... There is a design difference in the way this nozzle seats in there. Like I said, it's difficult to get these nozzles out, so you shouldn't have to worry about it too much. But if you do remove one and you end up with a post-war rebuild kit with this chamfer on it, maybe it makes a difference. I'm not sure about that. World War II one, remember, has got uh, this number of patents and the raised one there. And it's either has nothing on here or it does have the numbers here. That's the World War II 539S and not a 698S. So just bear that in mind. So we've got a nozzle in there. And this one has got a, uh, it's got the World War II one in there, I've checked. I can see the flat at the top there. So we're going to drop in our retaining plug and screw him in. So we'll just do that. He's got to go all the way down this one. He's got a long way to go. So the retaining plug and the nozzle are all seated in there. That's awesome. So we can put on an outer uh, no, we can put on the outer nozzle plug assembly on the end. Okay, and that is essentially, after putting on a retaining clip on the end of the pin there, That is our 539S, essentially complete. I've got to put on the um, top, the air horn, so we'll move on to that. That's very straightforward. All it says, install air horn on body. So this guy goes on the top. Ta -da. And then install choke shaft and lever assembly. So you put your, you drop your choke shaft in. Like that. Yeah, that's all the way in. Um, install choke valve, choke valve screw, centralizing the valve in the air horn, then tighten valve screws. So your choke valve will go in, you'll put your screws in, you'll tighten them down, centralize it just like you did with the throttle butterfly. And then install choke operating lever assembly and hook pullback spring in place. So if we go over to the Joe's motor pool carb as an example, so you've got your, your valve in there, you can see which way around it's orientated. You put in this assembly, You've got a screw there, you screw him on, so he's all in as one assembly. You make sure that your um, spring is all hooked up on there. And then, install, uh, did you do, install choke connector link, connector link spring and pin. Okay, so here's the link. So the link goes down, you put it in, you move this up, and you put it in the hole there, you move this down, and then underneath on this pin here, there's a little spring, that goes in there, so you put the spring in, then the um, linkage goes in and then you put on the little clip there. 
and essentially at the end of it you have a completed Carter 539S carburetor all ready to go. So hopefully gents and ladies that is the information you need. So what's important like we said, the important thing about this is accuracy, although you know I uh, went backwards and forwards a little bit there because I was sort of reading it and doing it at the same time which is not the best way, but accuracy is key, making sure this throttle shaft is um, good and there's not a leak there is really important. Make sure everything's clean as everything. Set up this metering rod correctly. Really importantly, make sure that your um, plunger is working. I think we went through that pretty well there about how to get this plunger to what the feel should be like and what the fit should be like to make it work. Too loose is bad, too tight is bad, just right is just right. If you don't have it set up just right, you'll get that horrible um, bogging down, which affects so many Jeeps. So really take some time on that. And when it comes to actually testing it, run it through a couple of times and watch the squirt coming out of there. So when it squirts, you should have, if you do it like that, fully, you should have three seconds. It should be one, two, three. So even though you've done it quickly like that, there's a delay in how long it takes the fuel to come out of the nozzle there. So it should be about three seconds. If you're getting about three seconds, or you know, just, just below, then that's good. You just need a long, continuous stream. But there you go. That is 539S's Carter 698 rebuilds a la Green Dot. Hopefully that's sort of been of interest to you. Um, if you've got any comments on that, let me know. and We can look into it. But I think that should really answer everything about it. Great little carb. Put it on the Jeep and run it next and see how it goes and see if this original rebuilt carb using worn parts, pretty good worn parts, works as well as the original rebuilt car using the NOS rebuild kit. I'm hopeful this thing's going to be fine. I don't see any reason why it shouldn't be. I've made a load of these um, and they seem to be pretty good. But this is cool. I like this. I like the patina on this. You compare it to this Zenith post-war carb. You know, this is this is pretty cool. I like it. And compare it to the Joe's, the brand new spangly looking carb. I like the wear on this. I like the look of it. It looks it looks neat and tidy, but at the same time worn and used. And I think this should be a really nice carb. So yeah, there we go. Hope you like that, everybody. Have a look through the other videos if you need to. All the information's there. And enjoy. Enjoy rebuilding carbs. They're not that bad, really. They're just take your time, work your way through it. You should be good. All right, let's go.